Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Round. Senator Shaheen, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and General Clark. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you all for testifying this morning. Um, General Clark, I know that um, the New York Times has pointed out that you all had been very involved in Ukraine, and we discussed this yesterday in terms of providing training to them that began in 2014. Can you talk about what some of how important that has been in providing the expertise that we're now seeing on the battlefield in Ukraine? Senator, I'd hit a, a few highlights. One is the competency towards you know, the security force assistance and specifically the high-end training that we did uh, for the Ukrainian Special Operations Forces. But I, uh, but I would also highlight for the committee the military information support ops or uh, information warfare that we had a dedicated team uh, that was in the Ukraine for eight years providing uh, that. Uh, and that was everything from billboard to print to using internet-based uh, capabilities, along with civil affairs teams uh, that were working with them. And it really, as we see today, the, the resistance uh, that the Ukrainian forces uh, have held and the training that they were given, I think, has you know, directly con uh, contributed to the success on the battlefield today. Thank you. And you mentioned the importance of the information warfare that has occurred there. And clearly, um, Ukraine has been masterful at what they've been doing, of course, Putin also has done a good job in preventing the, his citizens in Russia from knowing what's actually going on on the battlefield. So can you talk a little bit about whether we should develop, or maybe we already have, a gray, stone, gray zone strategy to encompass that kind of information warfare as we're looking at particular conflict areas around the world? Senator, you're... So you're, 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 you're pointing at a, a really key factor. Uh, and yes, you know, we have uh, already begun this in, in coordination with ASD Solik and truthfully with, with uh, Cybercom, uh, where much of the delivery of information resides. It is, it is critical. And uh, I would say we, we already have the authorities in many cases con to conduct information operations. We just have to make sure that they are in fact directed at the right audiences uh, and that we work very closely with our Department of State colleagues and the interagency uh, so that we're, that we're delivering proper effects at the right point in time. Thank you. And, and General Nexoni, what's Cybercom's role in defending the homeland from foreign cyber threats beyond just the critical infrastructure protection, and, and how are you working with public and private partners to protect the country? As, as we've looked at the potential for the Russian government to attack our critical infrastructure, and we still are concerned that that might happen, Senator, what are you doing? Senator, it begins outside the United States where my authorities rest, and that's uh, through a series of persistent engagement campaigns against malicious cyber actors that intend to do our nation harm. With the National Security Agency, Agency being able to release that information, so when we do a hunt forward operation in a specific country, being able to understand the tradecraft and the malware, and then releasing it public to, publicly provides an antidote to what they might do. And then within the United States, working closely in support of Department of Homeland Security and CISA, providing them any assistance that they need in terms of capacity or capabilities. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, one of the things that we've seen, and you mentioned this in your opening statement, you talked about the, the effort to encourage more women to join um, SOF. And we have seen in Afghanistan with the female tactical platoon, in Syria with the women's protection units, we're now seeing in Ukraine the important role that women are playing in conflicts, um, and they're actually getting more attention 
um, today than they were in years past. So can you talk about what we're doing to work with our international partners to highlight the role of women and make sure that they have um, the attention and support they need when we're working in an area? Senator, I think we concretely say that uh, women in SOF uh, are an operational imperative because of the ability to do some of the things you described in, in your question. Uh, it's, it's critically important, and especially some of the areas we've traditionally worked, to be able to have women that are operators or um, have s exquisite skills go to areas to be able to gather information that, frankly, men can't go or have a different outreach capability to different parts of communities. And I think as we look towards a future fight, whether it's against, uh, you know, gray zone competitors and non-state actors or state actors, we're going to need that capability. It's, it's a force multiplier, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Shaheen.